Now, when dealing with the top five problems that kill marriages, money is one, sex is another, communication is third, children are fourth, in-laws are number five. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. The Bible talks about leaving and cleaving, and there should be no outside influence that is, especially that that's not on one accord with what you guys believe and what you've set up in your relationship that's influencing one person over the other. It's just like having children and you are allowing a child to divide you. Well, you know, if, 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 if mommy says no, I know I can get daddy to say yes. Well, an in-law can be a child in that same respect, if not put into place. And it is the responsibility of the child of the parent to respectfully and lovingly put that uh, relationship into its proper position and place. Mom and dad can definitely be an advisor and give good advice and things of that nature, but, but we should not allow them to bring divisiveness into our relationship. You need to stand together as one and have a one opinion and one standard in your relationship that everybody on the outside knows what it is. Mom, dad, and anybody else with a uh, unsolicited opinion. So there's a principle that we believe in that we teach as Couples Academy, and this is it, you wanna write this down, it's deep. Partners first, parents second. Now that works two ways. I'll say it again. Partners first, parents second. So when we came together, we got married first, then we had children, right? So oftentimes when we get married and have children, we take off mommy and daddy, I'm sorry, husband and wife hat and put on mommy and daddy hat. Everything becomes about the children. Right? Children first and then our relationship. That's out of order. Likewise, we allow the influences of our parents to dictate what we do in our household. Because you come from that culture, that tradition, that way of doing and thinking, and oftentimes it clashes with your partner. And so what happens is if mama says something or dad, daddy says something, you side with your parent over your partner. And what happens is there's so many couples that are experiencing emotional abandonment in their own marriage because it seems as though you're taking the side of everybody else but me. I'm the one you live with. I'm the one you sleep with. I'm the one you wake up with. But it seems as though when it comes to any and everything, you side with your friends, with your family, with your coworkers, with everybody else, and you leave me left behind. And so oftentimes the issues of the parent sometimes lean so heavy on the relationship because we're siding with them. But there needs to become a united front between you and your partner. That's the power of one. See, it's a mystery. This marriage is a mystery, but something happens when one plus one now equals one, right? And it, it is a process too. Just um, understand and be sympathetic to the partner whose parents um, are, are bringing uh, opinions into the relationship. It's a process, especially if it's a newer marriage, because you're coming from a situation where you've always had the advice of that person. Maybe you um, relied heavily on their opinions and they're used to it too. So they're even going through transition. They're used to being able to, you know, for lack of a better word, maybe control you or maybe um, help you structure your, your decisions in life. And so everybody's going through transition. So it's not like um, you should expect your spouse to just, you know, drop the guillotine, cut off your mother or father, whatever they say does not, no longer applies, no. There, there needs to be a way that you sit down and figure out how to sit down with mom or dad and let them know, you know, we've come together and we've seen how this is causing a problem in our relationship and we, we know that you want the best for us and we know that that's really what this is all about, that you have our best intentions at heart. But for us, we need to move forward in this way. And so you want to handle it delicately, sensitively, and with compassion. Last thing, I have a couple who I've been counseling for about five months, and all of a sudden, things, you know, great, but all of a sudden, I get a phone call that they're about to divorce. I'm like, what? What are you talking about, divorce? Well, guess what? It was a family issue they never brought up, and it had everything to do with in-laws on both sides. So I said, you know what? We can't even make it another week 
So this whole concept of weekly counseling is thrown out the door. We need to do a private marriage intensive. So I took them away for 72 hours and literally knocked out every single issue they had regarding in-laws and created a plan. So we're giving you good tidbits and nuggets of information, but to really drill deep and, and create and craft a plan that will work in your marriage, that is the, pu the purpose of you know counseling and coaching and things of that nature. So I encourage those that are struggling with that to do that. 